Okay, this section is on conditional probability and the multiplication rule. So uh, on this first example, you can see we have a chart here, and it says find the probability of randomly selecting a Math 102 student given that the student is female. Well, we can write this problem probably of 102 slash, basically a straight up and down slash mark, F. And the slash mark stands for given. So we read this, the probability of 102 given the student is female. Now, this almost looks like a division sign, like an out of sign. And that's how to think of this. So it's out of the female students, not out of the 175 total students, but this is the probability that we get a 102 student given that we're only dealing with the female students. Well, how many female students do we have? Well, if you look across, you can see the total is 95. So that's going to be the denominator. And of these 95 students, how many of them are uh, in Math 102? Well, if we go across here, we can see 10 of them are. So the answer to this problem is 10 out of 95. We can also uh, ask the same question by just saying, what percentage of female students are in Math 102? Well, that's the same thing. Of your female students, out of your female students, which is out of your 95, 10 of them are in Math 102. So whether you say it this way or this way, it's the same thing. It's 10 out of 95. And that's what conditional probability is. We're getting the probability on the condition, some condition. And this condition is that the student is female. Okay. Um, uh, this is the same problem as example 1A right here, this 1B is, except it's just written a little differently. It says, what is the per percentage of female students that are in Math 102? So it's the same thing. We're restricting our sample space to just the female students. Now on 2A here, it says, find the probability of randomly selecting a female student given the student was in Math 102. Well, now it's out of the 102 students. Now, how many 102 students do we have? 30. So that's the bottom number, 30. And of those 30, how many of them are female? Well, 10. So the answer for this problem is 10 out of 30, which is about 33 and a third percent. So uh, you can see the order that you have them matters. Up here, when it was 102 given female, the answer was 10 out of 95, or about 10.5 percent. And here, flip-flopping around, female given 102 is not the same answer. It's out of just your 102 students, so it's 10 out of 30. Okay, one was 10 out of your 95, and the other is the 10 out of 30. So the, you got to be very careful about what goes on the denominator. And that's what it's out of. Here it was out of females, so the bottom number is your total of females. Here it's out of your 102 students, so your denominator, your bottom uh, number in the fraction, is the 30 102 students. Okay? Notice that they don't equal. The probability of female given 102 does not equal the probability of 102 given female. Now, what does equal is like the probability of 102 or female. See, the, pro the or symbol is commutative. You can say female or 102, and that's the same as 102 or female. Same way with and. If you say female and 102, that's 10 out of the whole 175. And if you say 102 and female, that's still. 10 out of your 175. So the order that you say an and and the order that you say an or type problem doesn't matter. But the order that you say a given type of problem, that matters. Okay. Uh, so let's go on down here to get a formula for this sort of stuff. So now we're getting into the ands. This symbol right here means and. So if two events are independent of each other, then the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. Now what does it mean if two events are independent of each other? Well, two events are independent of each other if the result or the outcome of the first does not affect the outcome of the second. Examples of that are, for example, coins. If you flip a coin and it lands heads, that has no effect on how that coin or any other coin is going to land uh, on, the, on another flip. So that's, they're independent of each other. Uh, when you roll a die, you could roll a die and it lands six. The next time you roll that die, it doesn't matter how it landed the first time, it's still a probability of one out of six that it will land a six, or a probability of one out of six that it will land a five or a three. 
since there are six sides on a die. And it doesn't matter how to land it. A lot of people think that playing lottery numbers, well, that lottery number just came up, so it probably won't come up on the next time. Well, it, they're independent. So if it's a one out of a thousand chance that it's going to come up and it came up last week, it's a one out of a thousand chance that it's going to come up this week. So that's when they're independent of each other. So um, here's an example of that. If you roll two dice, what is the probability that the first one lands five and the second one lands three? So the die are independent of each other here. The dice are independent of each other. Whether this one lands five has no bearing on whether this die is going to land three. So the probability of five and three is really just the probability of five times the probability of three. The probability that a die lands five is one out of six since there's six sides on a die and the probability that it lands three is one out of six. And one out of six times one out of six is one out of 36. Just multiply the ones together and multiply the sixes together. If you flip two coins, what is the probability they both land heads? Well, again, coins are independent of each other. So the probability that uh, heads on the first coin and heads on the second coin, we could write that as probably of heads and heads. See, heads and heads. And since they're independent, you just take the probability of heads on the first coin times the probability of heads on the second coin. Probability of heads on the first coin is 1 out of 2. Probability of heads on the second coin is 1 out of 2. And 1 out of 2 times 1 out of 2 is 1 out of 4. Cards are independent if you replace them. If you, uh, For example, you draw a, a card from a deck of 52 cards, then you replace the card and draw another card. What is the probability that both cards you drew were kings? Uh, well, these are independent events because whether you, whatever card you drew on the first doesn't affect the probability of the next card since you're replacing it. It's all because you're replacing it. So the probability that you draw two kings is the probability that you draw a king on the first card, which is 4 out of 52 because there's four kings in a deck and there's 52 cards in a deck. That's 4 out of 52 times the probability that you draw a king on the second card. And that's still 4 out of 52. So it's just 4 out of 52 times 4 out of 52. That reduces to 1 out of 13. This is 1 out of 13, and you can just multiply those fractions together. It would be 1 out of 169. Um, now, if two events are independent of each other, in other words, they're dependent, or if you don't know for sure if they're independent, then the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B given A. And you can also, since the AND is commutative, the probability of A and B is the same as the probability of B and A. So in other words, you can flip-flop these letters. So the probability of A and B is also equal to the probability of B instead of the probability of A. So probability of B times the probability of A given B. Now I'll show you that, that this formula is the one to use anytime you're dealing with anything other than coins or dice or cards. This is the thing to use. You don't know in a group of people if let's say their eye color is independent of their age. In real life eye color is probably independent of their age but you don't know if that's true with a group of people that you're dealing with. You know, So that's, uh, that's, this is the tough one to use here and we'll do that in just a second but I wanted to show you how this, can, um, this formula works. Now back on this original problem if I wanted to get you know bring this over here. If I wanted to get the probability of female and 102 on this table right here. Well the probability of female and 102 means you have to have both of those characteristics. You have to be female and in 102. And there's only 10 people in that. And that would be 10 out of the whole group, 175. Using the formula that we had before, we would take the probability of female, which is 95 out of 175, times right here, the probability of 102 given female. So the probability of 102 given female is 10 out of 95 and that's because we're given that they're female. So if you're given your female the denominator is 95 and it's 10 out of 95. Now if you check this it's, it works because the 95's cancel out right here and you get 10 out of 175 equals 10 out of 175. You don't need to do this problem the way I just did it. I'm just showing you that the formula does work. Um, we, if somebody says what's the probability of female and 102 and they give you a, in a table then you can just use the table. It's 10 out of 175. But I'm showing you that this formula works. And I'll also show you that this formula, if they're independent, does not work. Okay, The probability of female and 102 again is 10 out of 175. And that does not equal the probability of female times the probability of 102. Because the probability of female is 95 out of 175 and the probability of 102 is 
30 out of 175. 10 out of 170 is 0.057, and these two are right here, and when you multiply these two together, you get 0.093, and 0.05 doesn't equal 0.09, so therefore, these two things, your gender and what math class you are in, are not independent of each other. Now, even if I didn't know if, that they're not independent of each other, I would still use this formula, because this formula works all the time. For example, the probability of heads on the first coin and heads on the second coin, they are independent, and I can just take the probability of heads times the probability of heads. But I could also do the probability of heads times the probability of heads on the second coin, given that you got a heads on the first coin. The heads on the first coin doesn't affect it. So what I'm saying, this formula here works all the time, whether they're independent or not. I don't use this formula for rinky-dink things like cards and dice and, and coins. Okay, especially if the cards are uh, with replacement. Now, um, I think I may have to stop this video at this point and do a, an additional video because of lack of time.